So recently viewers on my channel have been getting really excited about these careers videos related to environmental science and science in general. And so I wanted to create this video today specifically about careers in ecology because I have a lot of experience in this specific topic. A few months ago, I went to a conference that was the Ecological Society of America, the largest ecology society in the world, and I asked a lot of questions to different professionals and lots of different people at this conference about their lives in ecology careers and what that was like, and I got a really great grasp on each of the four types of jobs in ecology. So today I'm going to be talking about all the different types of lifestyles you can have while still working with ecology and a little bit about what each of those types of careers entails. So the very first sector of jobs that does involve ecology is within the government. And there's a lot of different types of jobs that you could have within the government that relate to ecology. Those can include a wildlife biologist, park naturalist, restoration ecologist, fisheries biologist, hydrologist, geographer, project manager, environmental lawyer, community outreach coordinator, and educator. There are so many different types of things that you can do within the government that relate back to ecology. And that's the first thing that I wanna point out, that there is a massive variety of different types of jobs that you can have in the government that do relate to ecology. And lots of different departments, lots of different places that you can work. The government, um, the United States government is very large. So lots of opportunity already in just the types of jobs that exist. So as far as education goes for job availability, there's definitely positions available at all levels. So something like a community outreach coordinator or a park ranger only needs as much as a bachelor's, if even a bachelor's. And if you're really interested in the more sciencey types of positions, like a park naturalist, like a biologist, or fisheries biologist, those types of things normally need at least a master's degree. There are also definitely positions available at the highest level after a PhD. Those are usually the project managers and the project coordinators for a lot of the larger science related projects. As far as stability goes for um, types of careers in ecology, the most stable jobs are definitely going to be these types of jobs within the government. And you're generally going to have some really great benefits and a very comfortable salary if you are working with the government as well. So there tends to be some really awesome benefits like health insurance and retirement options associated with government positions, so something really awesome and something to definitely think about. The second section of jobs that involve ecology is the academic jobs in research and academia. So the types of jobs that exist in academia that involve ecology are university researchers, university professors, researchers at private institutions, and postdoctoral researchers, and research technicians. So education for this type of position in academia is generally almost always going to be at the master's level at least, and oftentimes a PhD. So if you are shooting for something like a research technician, you can definitely get those at the bachelor's level, but even those research technician positions tend to be pretty competitive and there's even people with masters competing for things at that level. It's uh, very competitive in academia to find roles and jobs, especially if you're not in an undergrad and you are kind of in between or don't even really want to do a master's. It's definitely difficult to find jobs in academia. Big push for a PhD. So as far as stability goes for ecology type careers, this is probably the least stable option, I would have to say. Stability is not the biggest thing in academia, especially at those lower levels. Technician positions and postdoctoral positions are 
usually on a one to three year contract. So it's not guaranteed that you're going to have long-term employment. Now, when you get to those higher positions at research institutions or universities, you will be more likely to have something called tenure, which is a much longer contract and much more um, stability with your job. But you have to get the, to those higher positions that usually require seven to 10 years of experience before you get to that stable point. And this kind of relates to salary and benefits as well. Salary can be on the lower end in uh, this section of jobs for entry level positions. And even when you're at the postdoctoral level, benefits are pretty slim when you get to this point. There are minimal health insurance options and retirement options are not really a thing either just because academic positions at the entry level are so um, short term and rely on contracts. So there aren't many long-term benefits um, at that level. But I do have to say one of the benefits of a job in the academic category is the field experience and the ability to basically work on exactly what you want to, especially if you're at those higher levels. If you're a university professor and or a um, professor at a research institution, then you can literally work on exactly what your heart desires. You can study whatever you want as long as you get the funding for it. And that is a really liberating thing and what draws a lot of people to academia. The other really cool thing about having a job in academia is the extensive field experience component. So research technicians are generally in the field a lot, doing a lot of groundwork. They'll also work in the lab a lot and they'll be working in the office. The university professors and researchers are also in the field for a substantial portion of the year, which is a really big perk of being a professor or a researcher. Definitely not a typical type of job, spending one to three months of the year out in the field. However, that is one to three months of the year as a professor and for the rest of the year, you're often teaching, you're juggling projects, and you are mentoring grad students, um, all the other things that come along with being a professor. Third type of job within ecology is in the nonprofit sector. Nonprofit organizations are basically organizations that have deemed themselves not for profit. They're not seeking money from the public for services or products. They are just trying to support an environmental or social cause. So the major goal for ecology focused nonprofits and environmental nonprofits is to get science to the people. So they'll have researchers going and collecting that data supported by the organization. They'll have people assessing that data and then they will have lots of communications and outreach people to break down that science into something that's digestible to the public through social media, through presentations, through flyers, through all kinds of different things. Communication is extremely important in the nonprofit sector. So I wanted to also mention that nonprofits can vary from an extremely small um, one, or not one, uh, five to 10 person organization all the way up into the thousands. Oceana is a really huge one. World Wildlife Fund is literally massive. There are so many nonprofits that are not small and offer very respectable, very well paid positions um, that I think a lot of people don't realize. For education, for a nonprofit type of job, um, a bachelor's is often fine for a lot of entry level positions. It depends on the scale and size of the nonprofit, but generally an entry level position, you can get a bachelor's and get a job just fine. Now a master's can help you get a lot of higher paying positions for nonprofits. And that is important to note. And especially in larger nonprofits, a master's can help you a lot. But an interesting thing to um, think about with 
nonprofits is the PhD. A PhD is actually rarely necessary in nonprofits and especially the smaller nonprofits that don't necessarily have the need for someone with a PhD. Um, you can actually overqualify yourself for a job in these smaller nonprofits because once you have a PhD, there is a expectation to get paid a lot more money. And I've talked about this in other videos before, but um, basically, if there is a position at a nonprofit and there's someone with a PhD and someone with a master's applying for this one position at a smaller nonprofit, the small nonprofit is probably going to take the person with the master's or bachelor's over someone with a PhD because they simply cannot afford to pay for that person. And they don't really need someone with that much expertise. They just need someone that is just really organized and really capable of doing whatever the job entails. Um, so something to definitely think about. A PhD can really help you in larger organizations where there is more of a need for much more expertise and much more specialization, especially ones that require a lot of research and science. But generally a PhD is not often needed in this field. As far as stability goes, this is another important conversation for someone interested in the nonprofit sector. It's variable, the stability, it depends on what um, type of organization you're at or the size of the organization. So smaller nonprofits are definitely not going to be as stable job options as a larger nonprofit for obvious reasons. It's just like a small business. There, If it's a small business, especially newer small businesses, there just isn't the infrastructure and support yet within the organization to really support the employees long term. Um, but at larger organizations, there is generally very comfortable job security and you're not really going to have as much of a problem with worrying about your pay or worrying about job security or anything like that because the organization is so well established and the infrastructure is comfortable enough that you shouldn't have a problem with anything affecting your contract. So another important thing to talk about is salary and benefits in the nonprofit sector. And you might be surprised to learn that nonprofit salaries are very comparable to for-profit salaries. And although they tend to be slightly less than for-profit organizations, they tend to offer some really generous employee benefits, which is something that was really interesting to learn um, researching for this video. So they try to buffer the slightly lowered salary with these really great benefits that are generally going to end up with a more satisfying career. So I think that's really important to mention and I think it's also really important to mention that if you're working at a nonprofit, you're going to be working for an environmental cause. You're going to be working about for something that is really important and the work you're going to do is going to matter, which is going to feel really good and I think outweigh a slight decrease in pay from for-profit industries. And you also might learn that your salary is extremely comparable to similar positions in for-profit industries. Now the last section of jobs that relate to ecology is industry and consulting. So consulting is a super cool type of job. And I learned a lot about this career when I went to this conference and attended panels to talk with different environmental consultants and talk about what they do for a living. So an environmental consultant works with a consulting agency. It can even be a consulting agency that you've started. You can have your own private consulting agency, um, although, it's definitely best to start out with a um, larger organization, but basically a client will hire an environmental consultant to use ecological science to solve social ecological issues. So this could be with a new building being placed or with a problem happening in the rivers and lakes in a community, or it could be 
anything. There are so many different social ecological issues that occur with different businesses and people will hire these consultants to come out to figure out the most environmentally friendly solution that's also the most affordable solution. So people can get environmental consulting positions at the bachelor's level for most entry level positions. A master's can help take you to more supervisory positions and also increase your pay. And a PhD can take you to the top of consulting in supervising very large projects and helping supervise the supervisors. So as far as stability goes for this type of job, it tends to be a quite stable option if you're working with a larger firm and you can sign a longer contract with more comfortable retirement and health insurance options. But if you're working as an independent consultant, this can be obviously a little bit less stable because it's going to be reliant on you finding clients and making sure that you always have contracts coming but um, you can have a lot of flexibility in what months or what weeks or hours that you're working it's all up to you but obviously it's going to be less stable and as far as salary goes for this type of job you can expect to make around fifty to sixty thousand dollars after about five years of experience as an environmental consultant i was finding a lot of variation in that number across the internet because you can have very different pay scales based on your education and um, the type of firm that you're at, but generally 50 to 60,000 seems like the consensus. And obviously that number can go up if you get a master's, if you get a PhD, or if you move up to more supervisory positions. So those are my four types of jobs in ecology. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have other ideas for different types of career videos like this, then let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, have a wonderful day and have a wonderful holiday. Whichever holiday that you are celebrating, I hope it's a fantastic one. So yeah, thank you for watching.